just think they invented gambling, Doyle. And two huge all-in pots left Vanessa rebuying and Bill doubling up Viffer. Uh, didn't expect that. I'm all in. Didn't expect that. That's what I said. <laughs> Call. I love that one time, you know, just punish. I'm all in. Seriously? You're all in. I'm not. I'll have change left. <laughs> Welcome to High Stakes Poker, presented by PokerStars.net. I'm Norm MacDonald. Well, last week was one hell of a start to Season 7. We met a few businessmen who were not shy about putting chips in the pot. Billionaire Phil Ruffin won an almost half a million dollar pot against pro Vanessa Selbst. And Bill Klein got his pocket aces cracked for over 400 k when David Pete rivered a flush. And with Texas Dolly and the Magician also at the table, you never know what's going to happen next. Let's see what they've got in store for tonight. I don't like putting two hundred thousand. David Pete and Phil Ruffin each up over two hundred thousand. One seventy. And Klein and Selbst have a lot of catching up to do. The hands over. But we didn't get to see what he'd done with some other hands. I'm pretty sure right now. After seeing that. Paul. Pete will limp in with nine eight suited. Spandieri calls, and Croak and Ruffin are along. Four plays to the flop. And an action flop. Ruffin with the open-ended straight. Spandieri an open-ended straight. Pete has top pair and gutter ball for Croak. Ruffin Five. opens the betting, and Pete calls with top pair. Antonio calls. And Croak comes along. Well, this is what a loose game looks like. A flush draw out there, and all the straight draws come along. And the ace Check. gives Croak a flush draw now. Check. Check. Friendly turn, everybody checks. Disaster card for Ruffin. He hits the nut straight. But Mr. Silly Band has a silly backdoor flush. And Ruffin reaching for chips. Fifty thousand. And a lot of chips. Again, he's gonna make a big overbet. But he's gonna get hurt this time. It looks like a $50,000 gift to Robert Crook. Oh. Why so much? I can't believe he's not snap calling him here. Hard to get a fourth. He has no reason to believe Ruffin has a bigger flush. This was a and Ruffin's unorthodox oversized bets huh? are beginning to make part. people question the obvious. If you pull 30 back, I'll call. And there he asks for a discount. Wow, such a huge overbet. My mom. I guess my hand is no good. And he throws it away. Straight. Well, my hand was good. good. <laughs> and Ruffin shows him the Hold straight to be nice to him. The babiest of all babies. You folded a flush? Well, you bet four times the pot. Yeah, I had a straight. I absolutely did. Did you really? Yeah. You had a straight? I had a flush. A four high flush. Oh, four high flush. And Ruffin's thinking... <laughs> Good, I don't give discounts. Give you too much credit for betting four times the pot. Big bets have been working out just fine for Ruffin so far, but I promise you, he keeps this up. He's going to get himself in trouble. Wow. Uh, four hundred. You're the small boy. I'm the small boy. I fold. 
Oh. All it was was a silly van shipment. Looked at that. Yeah, I know, but. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio taking advantage of his late position raising. And the two businessmen join him. I guess it's okay to be wrong once in a while. Okay, it's incredibly profitable. And top pair for Antonio and Croak. Second pair for Klein. Antonio bets. Croak has the better kicker. Call. Call five thousand four hundred. And he'll call. Klein. Well, Klein's gonna call. Call. He goes to the turn. Brick hits the turn. Check. Antonio still probably thinks he has the best hand. Maybe putting the others on second pair and a draw. And Croak thinking again. Again folds the best hand, but it was marginal. Antonio could have easily had the better kicker. Robert Croak getting robbed left and right. Welcome back to High Stakes Poker. Is that you tweeting on Twitter? Sure. Of course it's Doyle. No, it's my assistant. Well, I figure, I don't know. <laughs> it's I love Doyle, the Doyle which is tweets. True, which is a joke. I love the Doyle, I love the Doyle tweets, tweets, you know? Too. That is That's just awesome. Selp stuck and uh, finds a hand, so she'll raise it up. Going to before you ever thought of it, Antonio. Antonio comes along. And Klein with kings. Well, he's going to decide to trap these pros. Oh, hello. And Pete in with seven high. But he does put out some interesting facts, knowing that guy. Yeah, he's good, that guy. And the trap works. Check it. David Pete, the hapless victim in this one. And Klein, the check raise. And look at those faces. Who's trapping who? I really like how Viffer's playing this. Rather than Cole checking behind Klein, he tickled him with a small bet. And now just smooth calls the check raise. Yeah, Eric. You don't hit him. Tweet much, but when he does, it's you. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good sense of humor. How many people you follow, Barry? Well, Klein's got to believe he's up against Jax. <laughs> my girlfriend said that. Bifford just calls again. You yeah. should be working with me on projects. <laughs> I could probably do it even resource it. The problem with following people, you know, I get the stuff on my cell phone, and then, like, you keep getting things you think you gotta, you know, I'm always on Barbara, they always think someone called me or... And Klein yeah, yeah. fires a third barrel. Well, you can set it so your phone doesn't matter. Yeah. And Viffer didn't expect that. He's not acting, he's... Twitter, it's just if you found him, you get so much stuff. He's definitely gonna call. But he did not expect that, and he's wondering now if perhaps he's up against the full house. I don't want to ever be accused. Kings. Oh, my son. What didn't you want to be accused of? Those big pairs may be no good. No, I didn't want to raise them because it was going to charity. Oh, being a nit. Biffer explaining how charitable he is. Was a nit, but he, no, no, no. Something totally different. Oh, being a... I didn't want to take money away from charity. Well, right now, what a guy. it's better if it keeps going down. 
I mean, I would like you to in, win. In the big picture, you're right. I would like you to win. Uh, however, Trust that's me. not the way the, the mentality is for me right now. <laughs> yeah, right. nor for any of the people who you help. That's I'm right. sure they're rooting for you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what charity is it? What's your number one choice? Uh, I split it between two. Cystic fibrosis, yeah, it kills children. It's a uh, hereditary disease. And uh, I've been involved for 20 years, and since then, uh, the life expectancy was low teens, and now they're into the 30s with all, oh, the, really? all the work they're able to do. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, and the other one's at uh, the Shea Writing oh, Center, the horse therapy. Thanks. This thing where they take kids with developmental problems. And, and put them on horse track. And it's yeah. amazing, the success story. It stories. is amazing. It's an amazing animal. success story. I know, because I've yeah. looked into that stuff. Yeah, it's an amazing yeah, it's success just... story. When I grow up... Robert Croak is speeding. It's funny, when I grow up, I want to be me, too. I think, I, think, I think most people could respect what Bill does. Raise. And Klein, yeah. not being charitable with that steam raise. That's what happens when your kings get cracked. Pete unlikely to call a raise and a re-raise with a small pair. Oh, we done with this hand? I guess that was no good. Guess it was. I actually oh. had me dominated. Oh, look at, look at this. <laughs> sickos. <laughs> We're back at the Bellagio with more High Fountains. David oh, Pete yeah. has steamrolled his way to a $319,000 profit. Biffer's got the straddle on for $1,600. Barry raising it with it King 10. Oh. And Ruffin okay. defending okay. with King Six suited. Viffer finds himself a legitimate hand on the straddle, decides to just call. First action checks. Checks. And they check to the razor, who makes a continuation bet. Fiffer suspicious. And not a good card for Viffer. Biffer bets only 2,000. And Barry raises it 10 times. 20,000 total. My call. Biffer oh. takes no time at all in calling. He put Barry on a bluff, and he never took him off it. And he's finally convinced he's beat. He'll pay off the other 18. Antonio rushing back to the game. I wonder if he washed his hands. Most people believe that cash games in Vegas or anywhere else involve only professionals. But the truth is that these games are usually built around wealthy businessmen who like to challenge the pros. How much you want to bet? Well, how are you going to prove it? And that's why most of the time big pots and high stakes poker will develop between a pro and a businessman. Of course, that last hand between Viffer and Barry Greenstein doesn't happen that often. Usually, the experts reluctant to tangle with one another. So in this hand, the amateur limps, then the pro raises. Uh, another pro calls, and an amateur calls. Suited connectors for everybody. And a flush draw for the amateur. Okay. I'll check it. Straight draw for both pros.
Doyle Betts is double gutter. Crow calls. And David Pete doesn't want to chase the straight with two possible flush draws out there. Heads up to the river. Heads up to the river. Nothing materializing for Croak. The hands. But he has the best hand with seven high. Doyle knows that Croak is capable of laying down big hands. But he only has seven high, Doyle. Nice hand, sir. Thank you. Can you imagine Doyle has been doing this over 50 years? And by that I mean cash games, well before the tournament craze started. He may be most famous for winning his 10 bracelets, but I bet he's won a hundred times more money in the cash games over the years. Call. Klein limps with ace jack. P raises nice. with sixes. Doyle gets out of the way. Call. Call. And Vanessa says, okay, boys, let's get even. Call. Ruffin calls with two nines. Good luck. And Klein comes in. May somebody get punished. <laughs> <laughs> it's always better for the game. Pick me, dealer, pick me. First act, checks. Raffin's still ahead with the nines. Checks. Pete hoping nobody has a king. Nine. Vanessa thinking of maybe representing one. But decides against it. And Ruffin's not going any place. Never believes Pete. Right. And a bold move right. by Klein. I That's know Pete 8, can't call. More. We got a game, Mary. Mm -hmm. We got a game. Fifteen more. Fifteen thousand. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. That's okay. And Ruffin almost acts out of turn, which makes Pete's decision even easier. Ruffin signaled he was calling, and he calls. Heads up for the turn. Looks like okay. Klein doesn't want to steal from the sheriff. Maybe he does. And an immediate fold by Ruffin. So credit to Klein for taking advantage of his tight image. Nice answer. Thanks. King good. Even fooled Antonio. Welcome back to High Stakes Poker. 32, it's time to go with this. It's time? It's, well, it's approaching time. <laughs> I gotta have kids, man, you know? Barry Greenstein, raising with Queen Jack. Yeah. Is that a new kid? And Klein defends with ace nine. So we have pro versus businessman again. Heads up to the Businessman flops top pair and bets. Bet is 5,000. Pro flops the second pair and calls. Checks. Pro hits trips. Is 10, and businessman check calls. 
Chat on the river. I don't think that scares Barry. Checks. He's just thinking about how much to extract. And he decides on 28,000. Call. And he's right. Jack's good, huh? Yep. Nice hand. Jack is good. Barry Greenstein, ladies and gentlemen. Wee! Just wins the money. Nice Just wins the money. Nice the Speaking Just of businessmen, one you know? of the most successful in the history of Las Vegas, Benny Binion, is the subject of this week's PokerStars.net High Stakes Legend. Benny Binion, a gambler and bootlegger from Dallas, Texas, came to Las Vegas in the 1940s and eventually opened up the Horseshoe Casino, home to the World Series of Poker for 35 years. But it was Binion's ability to bring in the high rollers by refusing to institute a house limit on betting and start up the high stakes cash games that shaped Vegas forever. As journalist Howard Schwartz said, when you met Benny Binion, you felt you'd been part of history. There is one player here at the table that was close to Benny Binion. I'm sure you can guess who that is. Vanessa Selbst. Now it was Doyle Brunson. Thank you. Five out of 13, nine handed. That is sick. Right. I lost in the poker. Klein with a big hand again. Raises this time. And Selps calls. Croak comes in with Jack eight. And Selps takes the lead. But the thing is, with the aces, bad news for Klein. Here, Doyle, I'll give you this pack. This is the holiday pack. Here's the funny thing about five bucks, though. Klein bets. Vanessa thinks what to do. She knows Croak isn't going to call. He's busy selling silly bands. I'm sure he would have been quiet if he'd flopped a set. No, I wouldn't either. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it's like, hey, I've been paying for, Whatever I do, for virtual know. flowers. Yeah. I've been paying for virtual this. Well, I actually just, get something tangible. We're doing a deal right now. Are you familiar with Farmville? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, my daughter plays it's it. Huge, yeah. Yeah, right. Nothing it's changes on the turn. Farmville to where you can go to the Farmville site when you're playing, mm -hmm. click to the Silly Band site. Klein checks. On the Silly Band site in real world cash. And Vanessa decides to take the fight to the river. Four makes the straight possible. Of course, neither player has it. Kids go crazy for these for the collectability and the trade of them. And uh, you know. before the end of the show, I'm sure Antonio is going to come up with like a great trick with these. I just actually now Vanessa knows she has the best hand. It's just a matter of how much she thinks she can get paid off. And we have a little magic show going on, as Vanessa thinks. Uh, can't do it. Wow. Ooh. And you guys want to play poker with this guy? <laughs> I That's pretty that. good. That's, That's pretty good. What'd you do? Vanessa decides 7,000. That was good. Maybe the right amount. But no. I got better ones. Klein wisely gets away from it. You make great mounds of black chips disappear. We made a deal before you got here that I was going to go on a little heater here shortly. So I'd appreciate it if you could uh, assist in that a little bit. We're back for more High Stakes Poker. Doyle Brunson starts the action with a raise. Queen Jack suited. And Antonio just flat calls with a pair of queens. Another pro on pro action. And the jack comes out. But the three spades are going to slow things down. Forty-one. Forty-one. Just forty-one. Forty-one. Bet 
And now the queen comes, and that's gonna cost Doyle some money. Top two against a set. Why keep putting the one out there? Only another spade may save Doyle. It looks more analytical. I like doing on uh, online. Doyle online. checks. So, you know, you can uh, make the buttons to whatever percentage of the pot you want. Exactly. So you like 70% of the pot or something, and you just click it instantaneously, and it's like some weird amount. Your bet yeah, is right. like 1,000. Antonio makes an exactly. almost pot-sized bet, and Doyle doesn't yeah, like it. He knows he's now up against no, either a stone-cold bluff or a monster I think, I think hand. Risen should get credit for that, because I think he was the first one that really online did all the weird raise sizes. And he sees the bad news. Wow. Top set again, stop two. Couldn't a jack come on the river? Bad luck, Antonio. Oh, nice. yeah, you're just running real bad. Did you really want to ask for more than that? Ball. I'll take it. Doyle is not amused. It's hard to get Doyle's money. It's hard to get Doyle's money. Rough and limps with king three of clubs. And Pete raises with nine deuce of clubs. And rough and calls. If the dealer puts three clubs on board, it's goodbye, Mr. Viffer. Nope. Five thousand. Just a pair of kings for Ruffin. And Viffer beats him into the pot with his monster. Obviously, he's got larceny in mind. Yeah. Phil Ruffin shows no respect. Well, Viffer's plan seems to have backfired. But he's not willing to jump ship yet. 50,000, he's gonna put Ruffin to the test. What you got? Tough call for Ruffin. Call. Guess not. Well, now this is getting interesting. What is David Pete going to do? There's 119,000 in the safe now. Queen of hearts. Three hearts on board. Two. So what's the right combination to open the safe? 30 to the right, 18 to the left. Or a hundred thousand in the middle. Let's see what's here. Fifty. Does the rubber band play? <laughs> Does the silly band play? Yeah. Hey, how much you have there? I want to say he can't call this, but he's proven me wrong before. That'd be a good deal for you. Call. And there he goes. You got it. <laughs> well, look at the cards, Phil. You can stop counting any time now. Yeah, I'll do the nine. Kings. Kings. Wow, what a call. What a call. Nice hand. So uh, you don't bluff Antonio, and you don't bluff people with more money than you. Yeah. <laughs> so funny, dude. Let me introduce you to Phil Ruffin. <laughs> He's the oh, geez. owner or you something like that of Treasure Island. So, right. You gonna put that around this, the other brick? <laughs> I think the silly bands are doing better for him than they did you, yeah. for sure. Nice call, Phil. Thank you. Very nice call. A classic mistake by a pro. You do not beat recreational players strategically. You beat them with fundamentals.
You are looking at Bobby's room at the Bellagio, the Madison Square Garden of epic poker games. It's empty now, because all the big boys are in our suite. Phil Ruffin talked to Kara about that big call he made before the break. Uh, I had kings, and he kept coming at me. And uh, I thought the kings were pre pretty good. And then he went, I think, all in or something very close to it. Call. Cool. Just, I made a good call. I, I just, I called him, he had zip. You got it. Do you think that he was pushing you around, trying to, you know, be a bit of a bully at the table? Pretty hard to bully when I had all those chips. It's an easy call for me. I was sitting there about 600,000 or something, you know, so it was easy, easy to do. Not a problem. You didn't think that, you know, there's a possibility he could have had, you know, a better king or maybe an ace? Or, did any of that go through? No, he could have had anything. Mm -hmm. But it was worth it was worth the call to do that, and you know, everybody, everybody at the table said that's a great call. So maybe it was. I don't know. Nice call, Phil. Thank you. Very nice call. Would you have made the same call against uh, one of the other players if it had been someone else? I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it a little bit. One thing is for sure: after the call. The Ruffins made everybody's gonna holster their guns. Nobody is gonna bluff Phil Ruffin. Not now, not ever. Call. Klein limps with ace 10, and Pete raises with pocket jacks. So they'll go heads after the flop. He's gonna be here for fighting. You've been doing it all day. You're smart. See, I am prepared. I brought my food, though. Right. You know? Oh, and another bad flop for Klein. Okay. He decides to proceed cautiously. I was going to say the exact same thing. Queen of Heart gives him a double gutter. I think Bill Klein's just getting a little gun shy. If he was winning, I think he would have called there. I know Phil wouldn't have laid that one down. Do you have an eight? I don't lay anything no. down. I don't think it's deep. Not that good. Real good. Look at that lady. This is the only day you have a chance to get me because uh, I'm not in All right, let's look at the tail of the tape. Well, you like and Ruffin has increased his stack size. He's now up over 340,000. <laughs> and Klein's charity doing even better, 350,000 up. I will tell you one thing, though. I bet you do sleep good tonight. I got a hotel to run, guys. I heard about that. What's that club in there? Is it, is it still open? Yeah, we're, uh, we're releasing it out to... Uh, the place out of China, uh, uh, Chin Chin out of L.A. You know Chin Chin? So Vanessa raises with Queen 8 suited and uh, Croak calls with Ace Jack. Uh, it was an Asian restaurant called... Society Queen. or uh, the sushi place? No, it's pretty well. Yeah, Klein comes in with Queen 10 suited and Pete with Jack 6 suited. Yeah, steakhouse. Uh, huh? Put my name on it. Yeah, it was good, I've eaten there. It was good steak. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Good steak. Yeah, we, used prime, we used prime beef. Yeah, yeah, it's good quality. Little steakhouse for yeah. yeah. At Treasure Island? Yeah. Free appetizers? I'm in. <laughs> Croak in the lead with aces. Can you make that happen? Uh, all right. Can't make it happen, no. Do you eat steak still? Yeah. But Vanessa takes a shot at it, she and Croak on. immediately yeah. calls. Yeah, we'll come. I'll come. Okay. He's Comp and Doyle, but no free appetizers for Antonio. No worries. <laughs> yeah, and man, he's do he's come by any time. Any time. That hurts a little bit. Yeah, he can come by any time. And I'll comp you Thank too. you. Mm -hmm. I don't need a comp though. Hey, you got a lot of money. That's right. It's not a matter of money, it's a matter of Selbs hits the perfect card on the turn. I appreciate it. I will take you up on that. I'll bring my dad. He loves steak. Okay. My dad yeah. and my little brother. Okay. Well, I got good quality meat in there. I need them. Anybody got a queen? I'll, I'll just tell the... Yes, uh, the lady in the, the two-seat. 
uh, you know, the owner said he's going to take care of it. No, you don't bring me a check. You have to call <laughs> Let's me see how far that goes. You have to call me in advance so I can say right, I'll get your number okay. before the end. Right. Treasure Island. Send a, you know. I don't even know. That, Just dump off the rest that. of this money and he'll have your number. <laughs> <laughs> like Lyle said, he called Bobby. He said, you know, what's a good restaurant here in the REA? Bobby told him one of them, I forget which one. And he said, go ahead and go, go to dinner. I'll, I'll comp you. I pick, I'll pick up the check, he said, laughing. And I, I said, okay, make it for eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, right. That's 22800 Again, this is one of those hands where Croak is thinking that she is either bluffing or he's beat. Vanessa is not betting King Jack or Ace-10. I call. So he decides to call. Breaking up that beautiful bundle must be breaking his heart. Vanessa has to know that Croak has two pair or a set. And King pairs the board. I wonder what she's going to do. And Robert Croak hates that card. It nullifies his aces and jacks. Nice value bet. The 32 2. I don't see how she's going to get paid off. Bill Ruffin might be a different story. Got a big hand? You have a super good hand? <laughs> so gross. God, I just feel like, why would you bet that river? Because she's hoping you'll call. Hi, fold. But you already figured that out. Nice hand. Thanks. Nice lay down. So Vanessa gets a little bit of her losses back. And Croak falls into a deep depression. And welcome back to High Stakes Poker. Oh, fair. Sorry. Thank you. That's what, yeah. I folded my 10 deuce because I was afraid it could be 10 deuce. I, you know, I didn't want to take a shot. I had 10 deuce suited. I didn't want to play it if uh, it was out of there. Sorry. Antonio raises under the gun with 8 7 suited. I thought Barry was smarter than that. Well, I guess now we know. It just looks like it's <laughs> That's right. The, the beard. That's right. The philosopher's beard. You, you guys have all found me out. Total idiot. Right. And he gets four callers. Good luck to me. It's a loose call for, yeah. for, for, for the TV. That's okay, I got favor. Okay. It's a good start. Wow, a lot of potential on this flop. Antonio has a straight flush draw, and a nine would make him a straight also. Viffer decided to jump barefoot into a cactus field. Now, Barry Greenstein has to raise here. He knows one of these boys has a draw. He does make it 30,000. Now, Antonio. He must be wondering if somebody has a bigger heart draw. Barry could have an ace ten of hearts.
Really thinking this over. And a big raise by Antonio, 106,000. And this gets rid of the barefoot boy. Well, Barry's not calling here. And it's hard to imagine him folding with only two hands that can beat him. So that only leaves one option. And that's the option. Once or twice. Antonio calls. We have the biggest pot of the season, just shy of $600,000. Antonio just asked Barry if he wanted to run it twice, but Barry always runs it just once. And a hard hits the turn, which means Barry will have to pair the board, or it's a magical moment for Antonio. Are they going to say that to me? Like, no pair. Abracadabra, 600,000 goes to Antonio. Nice flop. So Barry Greenstein, who's been making all the right moves, gets devastated by the Queen of Hearts. There's 200. Next time on High Stakes Poker. Hello, fish cake. A familiar face joins the felt. It's a pretty big poker game. If there wasn't a river, there'd be no fish. A few good jokes <laughs> cause a few big laughs. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, man, but